what is the nature of uh, influence that parents actually have over kids? Uh, and so Judith Rich Harris wrote this very provocative book called The Nurture Assumption, which points out that you know everybody assumes that parents have all this influence, but if you actually go try to measure it and look at the raw data, it's really hard to, to see proof of this kind of influence of parents uh, beyond what is contributed genetically. And this beyond what's contributed genetically is really critical because uh, people had seen, you know, lots of examples where parents seem to be influencing their kids, but they hadn't really properly accounted for the genetic contributions. And once you do that in a careful way, there's not much left over uh, scientifically, again, in these studies to indicate that parents have a big influence. Some of the stuff that Harris points out uh, kind of phenomenologically is, you know, that uh, when you have immigrants coming to a different country, their kids do not speak the parents' language uh, as much as they really seek to incorporate the, the new language of their new environment. And so that becomes kind of the preferred language for the kids. Uh, that's what they really are motivated to learn. And, and, you know, it's like, think about your own experience in, as you were developing in high school, et cetera, you know, were you really eager to talk to your parents or were you more eager to talk to your friends, right? And this whole reorientation towards peers and friends during this adolescence time period, but really that starts earlier, uh, suggests that, you know, there really is this kind of uh, emerging self-control kind of phenomenon uh, and, and orientation towards uh, peers rather than parents. But it's very, very hard to measure the effects of parents simply because as we're emphasizing, you know, the kids have this individual sense of self-control. And so a kid's reaction to a given kind of parental influence can be either, you know, uh, to assimilate or to rebel, right? Half the kids rebel and half the kids assimilate, there's no net effect. And so and under that very, very simple kind of model, you can, you can perhaps see that trying to measure the influence that parents have can be very complicated because everything's kind of this interaction, right? It's, it's not just kind of what the parent's doing, but it's how the kid interacts or, in, or reacts to that parental influence. And so if that's at all kind of nonlinear, then uh, it suggests that, that it would be hard to see influences of parents, even though clearly if you're rebelling or if you're assimilating, that's an influence of the parent. And so both of those would count as influences, but unfortunately at the overall kind of average level, they would cancel each other out. So there's a lot of kind of reasons like that and many others why it's, it's very difficult to measure the influence of parents. Um, and also going back to this genetic environmental correlations, you know, whatever genes are, are being uh, inherited from the, you know, by the kids from the parents, those things are going to play out in shaping the environment. And so, you know, is it environment or is it genes? You really can't tell the difference. So there are some extreme cases uh, where, you know, you have orphans or cases of, of abuse and neglect. Um, and, and so in those cases, you do see more environmental effects, but actually sometimes often surprisingly little relative to the genetic factors that are present. So this shades into this kind of notion of differences in temperament that, uh, are, is kind of the, the younger version of personality. So as we saw, when we talked about like the big five factors for personality that characterize adult personality differences, um, those things have a lot to do with kind of social, uh, you know, identity and, and place in society and kind of orientation towards the, the larger social forces. Um, but earlier on, you see these kind of more core basic uh, temperament differences, which are characterized uh, as kind of a subset of those ocean factors. So in particular, conscientiousness, neuroticism, and extroversion are kind of the three main temperamental factors those are a subset of the overall ocean factors that are present kind of earlier in development. And so that also gives us a sense of uh, those as being kind of more core factors relative to the later developing more social factors. And you can also see them as kind of basic parameters that might exist biologically in our motivational systems. Another important topic in early developmental uh, theory is attachment theory. It's 
I, you know, a lot of people think it's kind of overblown uh, and, and there's been some reaction to that. Uh, so it's kind of controversial, uh, this idea that, you know, everything, it's kind of almost a Freudian level focus on this kind of parental influence of the mother. Um, and this idea that people have these different kind of attachment styles as infants in relation to their mothers, and that this is sort of predictive of later outcomes. A lot of that predictability is not so clear, especially as distinct from these kind of temperament factors. Uh, but in any case, uh, it's something that's that's still uh, discussed in intrapsych textbooks, so we'll talk about it. Uh, and so the idea here is that you introduce this strange situation and measure the reaction of the child to uh, being separated from their mother for X amount of time. Okay, that's the strange situation is you remove uh, mom from the from the environment. How does the child react? not only when mom's gone, but also more importantly, when mom comes back. Uh, and so the quote unquote secure attachment or the, the quote unquote normal way of being attached to your parent is that you miss your mom when she's gone and you're happy when she's back and you exhibit kind of these pure uh, forms of kind of missing and, and you know, uh, relief when mom comes back and that you're okay interacting with strangers as long as mom's around. So the kind of security effect of mom. Avoidant is a more kind of disengaged uh, behavioral profile, even in the context of your mother. Uh, so just kind of not being so directly interacting with the parents or with others. And then insecure ambivalent is this idea of uh, essentially kind of uh, really being more emotionally dependent on your mother and so if if you are separated and then your mother comes back, you kind of take it out on her and you're like, eh, you know, you're mad that uh, she left you. Um, and so that's that kind of ambivalence of not being fully happy when mom comes back because you're still mad at her.